the winter of 1897. Beyond mountains, 2,000 miles north from civilization, the cry was gold. All over the world, a million people laid plans to go. A hundred thousand actually set out. But the going was so hard, the way so weary that more than half turned back. My father was one of those who struggled on. Scarcely any of these men were miners. Most were white collar workers. My father had just graduated from university in civil engineering. All of them had one idea. They were on their way to the Klondike to shovel up gold. And they were going to be rich beyond the dreams of avarice. The Chilkoot Pass. This scene, above all others, remained in my father's mind to his dying day. Even when his memory began to fail, this spectacle remained. You had to pack a ton of goods up this terrible 45 degree slope of sheer ice, 100 pounds at a time, over and over again, a year's outfit. Without that, the Mounties wouldn't let you enter the Yukon. You couldn't stop to rest, or it might be hours before they'd let you back into that endless human chain. At the top, a city of provisions. 70 feet of snow fell that winter, and by spring, there were seven such cities, layer upon layer, buried beneath it. But the persistent ones dug out their supplies and slid it off down the mountain slopes on the next lap of the great adventure. Here on Lake Bennett at the head of the Yukon River, 20,000 men built 7,000 homemade boats. Few of them had ever handled a saw or hammer before. They cut the planks by hand and then they used oakum to caulk the seams or pitch boiled out from spruce gum. Sometimes they even used their own underwear. And then the word, the river's clear of ice. And on June 3rd, 1898, the fantastic armada was launched. The mountains behind, Dawson ahead, 500 miles to the north. Clear sailing all the way downriver to the gold fields. Most of them were too late. They found almost everything staked, valleys, hills, even moose pastures. Here was El Dorado Creek, the richest of all, 31 claims, each worth more than a million, but all owned by men who'd been on hand 18 months before. All the land was being torn up by these early birds as they worked feverishly with sluice box and rocker. For the newcomers, nothing. Only a few got claims, and these soon came to realize that you just couldn't scoop up the gold by the shovelful. You had to burn your way down through the permafrost, 30, 40, perhaps 100 feet. you kept testing for that elusive, glittering ribbon of soil known as the pay streak. It might take 10 months of back-breaking toil before you knew how rich you were.
but the gold was there. And Dawson City grew on it. Here on a wedge of frozen swamp, not far from the Arctic Circle, a weird and exotic city sprang up. A city big enough to hold 30,000 souls. For one demented summer, it was Mecca. And here too, ground of another kind was being staked out by the early birds, who would never need to swing a pick handle to fill their pockets. Forty thousand customers poured into the waiting town from all over the world. Australia, Greece, every province in Canada, every state in the Union. They had names like Calamity Jane, Diamond Tooth Gertie, Swiftwater Bill, and the Evaporated Kid. And if a man were shrewd enough or cold-blooded enough, a fortune could be made in a week. There were no price ceilings. A fresh egg cost two dollars, a glass of milk five, a pint of champagne, 30. For Dawson was feeding on gold. Gold poured in from the creeks on mules' backs while the whole town watched watched and waited. My father used to talk about Big Alec MacDonald, who had 29 mules, each loaded with 100 pounds of gold. He'd been broke two years before, until he bought a million dollar claim for a sack of flour and a side of bacon. He lived to eat off gold plate and ride a carriage down the Champs-Élysées. But when he died back here in the Klondike, he was broke again was the way it went, down the hatch. You could buy wine enough to fill a bathtub. And if you were so inclined, and somewhere, you could pay a girl to take a bath in it. You could do anything if you had enough gold. Mm -hmm. 